Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Val if you are new here. So today I want to just share with you guys just some quick, basic, easy tips on how to increase the thickness in your hair. So I've been getting quite a bit of questions as to, you know, what do I do to increase thickness in my hair? How do I make my hair thicker? So I figured, you know what, let me just share a few of the tips that have helped me throughout my hair journey to increase the thickness, fullness, body, all of that in my hair. So if you're interested, keep on watching. Oh, I just want to put a quick disclaimer out there that not everyone is born with thick hair. Some have high density, some have low density, some have fine hair, some have thick hair. It really depends on your genetic makeup. But there are some healthy hair care habits that you can instill into your regimen that will kind of help enhance the body, the fullness, the thickness in your hair. So recently I came across this quote on Instagram. The account is Hair Education. She's amazing. Her name is Laid. And she said something that really like just struck a chord with me. It just resonated completely because I get it. So she said something along the lines of our hair journey is all about experiencing our hair at its full genetic potential. That's huge. So it's all about maximizing our full genetic potential in our hair. So whether you have fine hair, thick hair, maximize your potential. And everyone can increase the body, can increase the fullness in their hair once it's at its healthiest state, right? So with that being said, you can definitely maximize the full potential of your hair by just instilling a few healthy hair care habits to increase the fullness and the body in your hair. All right, so tip number one, I would definitely say low manipulation. So just leaving my hair alone has been a huge help in terms of just increasing that thickness in my hair. For me, I don't need to pick up the comb on a daily basis and just comb my hair. I use my fingers, you guys, and I've said this multiple times in my videos my fingers have literally become combs I can detangle I can remove knots from my hair with just my fingers so it really helps to lessen unnecessary breakage because we all know breakage leads to thinning and we don't want thin hair right try to find styles that are easy that you can just use your fingers for and I know it's like okay how do I put down my comb how do I not style my hair like for me I like to do braid outs and this style honestly no comb was needed just finger detangle with my hands. I braid my hair, moisturize it obviously, and it's good to go. I just unravel it in the morning and there's no heavy manipulation on my hair. Like my strands are not stressed, they're not being tugged or pulled. So it's all about trying to find and understand your hair, find out what works for you. You guys know my fingers are my combs. I barely really pick up a comb at this point, but it did take some time, some practice, some getting used to. There is a slight learning curve where that's concerned. So for me, just putting down the comb and reserving it more so for wash day doing a full detangle at that point doing buns like protective styles as well huge help and obviously you want to move your bun as well you don't want your bun to be in the same position all the time because that too can cause breakage and thinning and we don't want that keeping things very minimal in the grand scheme of things have been a huge help like less is more in that sense tip number two is stretching my relaxers so I stretch anywhere between 10 to 12 weeks that is the perfect time frame. That is my threshold. That is my comfort zone. Anything outside of that is just, it just doesn't work for me. The whole point of stretching a relaxer is to prevent overlap. So you want to have enough new growth, at least an inch or so, because we get about half an inch of growth every month. So if you relax at six weeks post relaxer, chances are, girl, you don't have enough new growth. Let's just be honest. If you can't see the amount of new growth you have, chances are you could overlap onto the already relaxed hair. And if you overlap, that leads to overprocessing, and overprocessing leads to breakage and thinning, and it's just a disaster at that point. So we don't want damaged hair. We wanna have enough new growth because you only put relaxer on natural hair. So our new growth obviously is natural and you wanna be able to apply it and see where you're applying it to, right? You guys have seen my relaxer day video. I don't play when it comes to just applying the relaxer only to the new growth, that is key because trust me, I've been there and I've had stylists, professionals actually apply relaxer to the entire length of my hair and let me sit in it like it's conditioner. Bruh. We're not trying to go backwards, we're trying to move forwards. It's 2022. No one should be putting relaxer on their ends unless they're doing a virgin relaxer or they're trying to do a corrective. And I'm not saying to stretch past your comfort zone. It's always important to know your threshold and to just stick to that. Also, I only use normal strength relaxers. I find that using normal strength is perfect. I know that there's mild, there's normal, and then there's um, extra strength. The extra strength is a little too strong for my hair. I love normal because it's kind of slow in the processing time and it doesn't leave my hair super bone straight. Like I have some texture remaining. For me, I'd rather have a little bit of texture versus bone straight hair. 
that's just my preference. All right, so tip number three I would say is protecting my previously relaxed ends. And if you guys watched my relaxer day video, you definitely know I don't play when it comes to protecting my ends. Relaxer runoff is real and it can still process your hair slightly if you don't protect your hair. I always use a conditioner and grease prior to relaxing my hair. That way, if the relaxer does run off or if it drops on my strands, it's not actually penetrating through. There is a barrier over my hair. So that's really important because relaxer runoff can still process your hair and if your previous relaxed hair is processed it could lead to over processing and breakage and thinning we don't want it and this tip is really really important for my girls who go to the salon and if they have stylists who overlap and they're just messy with the whole relaxer application put oil put conditioner put grease put something on your hair that way you have that peace of mind and say for example relaxer does happen to drop on your ends during that process you never know you are covered, you're good to go. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna mention is a little bit controversial in the hair care community because some people love it and some really, really hate it. So for me, coconut oil has been amazing in the pre-poo form and even in my deep conditioners, but more so as a pre-poo paired with my protein has just been amazing in terms of strengthening my hair and making it fuller and thicker and stronger. Coconut oil is said to be the only oil that can penetrate the strands up to 90%, so it can get into the cortex, so the inner part of your hair strand. No other oil is like that in terms of just how far into the cuticle it can penetrate and it also prevents protein loss and we all want to preserve the protein that is in our hair right and I know some people have complained about coconut oil making their hair feel rough dry brittle I get it trust me I do I get those symptoms or those reactions in my hair when I use it as a leave-in so if I use it um, post wash day or as a sealant my hair just can't take it. So I prefer to use it in the pre-poo phase or in the deep conditioning phase. That way my hair gets the benefits, but it's not staying in my strands throughout the day or throughout the week. So using it prior to shampooing is when you're really going to see the benefits of coconut oil. It can really just fortify the hair, strengthen it, and really increase the fullness and thickness of your hair. So the next controversial tip I would say is light protein treatments. Not a lot of people like protein, but it is extremely beneficial and necessary in a relaxed hair journey, in a relaxed hair regimen, only because the protein in our strands have been compromised. And if the protein has been compromised, you need to kind of replenish the protein that has been lost in the hair. And using protein really depends on your hair. For some, they use it bi-weekly, some use it monthly, some use it every relaxer. It really depends on that individual and their hair. So I used to do protein on a weekly basis and it really helped to just increase the health of my hair. But now I find that my hair doesn't really need that much protein and I've decreased it to like bi-weekly or monthly depending on how my hair feels. But I find that a lot of people are scared of protein and um, they just don't want anything to do with it. But at the same time, our hair is made up of protein right and if you're not replenishing that protein or you're not eating enough protein in your diet as well that can really you know play a role in how healthy your hair is or not protein tends to make the hair rigid it makes it hard it can make it dry as well never use protein by itself so the next step you want to do is follow up with a moisturizing deep conditioner to help soften make the hair more manageable also protein helps to fill the gaps along the cuticle so if there's holes or any missing cuticle parts protein will help bind everything together making your hair strands feel fuller thicker and have more body so don't be scared of protein it is your friend use it wisely but keep it in your regimen and know how to use it for your hair Type. I also want to say that if you are you know sensitive to protein I get it a lot of people have that sensitivity instead of using a straight protein based conditioner like Afigee two minute reconstructor or a firm reconstructor or hair mayo um, from ORS try using a moisture protein balance conditioner as your protein treatment so instead of using something that is just straight protein try using something that has a little bit of both moisture and protein in it that way it's not too harsh or strenuous on your strands if that helps all right, so next tip is just keeping up with my trims. I find that just having my hemline, so the way my hair hangs, I call it a hemline. So just having that nice and neat and full has really contributed to the thickness of my hair. I like to trim my ends every relaxer, so every 10 to 12 weeks. That is just the aesthetic that I like. I like my hair to look a certain way or hang a certain way. And in between my trims, I like to also dust my ends. So by dusting, I mean just trimming off 
tiny amounts to the point where it looks like dust. And the whole purpose of that is to basically detect any kind of single strand nods, any kind of splitting that may be going on. You catch it before it gets any worse. So I've invested in some shears and I'm really happy about that. So I'll be dusting my ends in between my trims. And I've seen a few people do this with amazing results. So I'm like, you know what? Let me try it and see how it works for me. By no means am I a professional, but I like to do a little bit of dusting here and there just to maintain the hemline in my hair. So in addition to that, I like to moisturize and seal on a consistent basis. So for me, I like to moisturize maybe every other day or so, typically in the night. So the whole purpose behind me moisturizing and sealing in the night is just so that everything can just penetrate into my strands while I'm sleeping. My hair is covered with my satin scarf, my satin bonnet, and it's just trapped in my strands. As opposed to moisturizing and sealing in the morning, you go out for the day, that will evaporate like that. So it's really important for me to just do it at night and then in the morning, I style it and go. So keeping my hair moisturized and obviously keeping my ends trimmed has definitely contributed to fuller thicker hair all right so the next tip I would say is less direct heat I haven't used heat you guys I want to say since September I haven't flat ironed my hair since September 2021 I've been going on this little no heat challenge my own little challenge that I created and it's been great I've been loving the air drying method blow drying on cool air going heat free has definitely helped in terms of just adding that fullness to my hair and that overall fluffy thicker look so obviously you want to use heat responsibly and that's you know making sure that you put any kind of direct heat on clean hair, conditioned hair, hair that is protected with a heat protectant, that is key. You also want to be careful with the temperature that you're using. I don't go over 350 on my flat iron. Anything more than that is just a no. So for me, less direct heat has been amazing. You know, if you want to air dry or roller set, that is great because roller setting is a form of indirect heat as well. But using any direct heat tools, flat iron, blow dryer, um, curl wand, curling iron, be very, very careful. You want to just kind of put those away for a bit, enjoy your hair in its air dried state if you can, or in a roller set or even like a flexi rod set, but find something that will prevent you from picking up those hot tools. Just kind of be creative with it and see what works for your hair. All right, so next up for me, I would say is deep conditioning. Deep conditioning has played a huge role in just keeping my 4C coarse dry hair moisturized. You guys, my hair is dry, like just naturally very, very dry. And deep conditioning without fail has been a lifesaver, a game changer for for me it has increased the elasticity in my strands as well and overall deep conditioning is just going to promote the health of your hair i like to deep condition on a weekly basis without fail and i like to use heat when i deep condition so i like to use either my hooded dryer my steamer or my heat cap and i typically leave it on anywhere from about 20 to 40 minutes or so and then i'll rinse so using heat has been beneficial because it opens up the cuticle it allows the conditioner to penetrate deeper and overall my hair just feels way more moisturized it feels manageable it feels soft the elasticity is back in my hair so using a heat source is vital for my hair so lately I've been getting a lot of questions about you know what if I don't have a steamer or a hooded dryer what can I do and for me I really think that making that investment is really important having a hooded dryer it's gonna last you a few years or several years my hooded dryer just conked out and it's been going strong for over 10 years I want to say it was about under 50 bucks well worth the money and my hair benefited from it so I'll Always encourage you guys to make that initial investment but if you really don't have the means you're a student you're young I get it try to layer your hair with plastic caps so use at least two to three they have like that self-heating cap I think it's like a gold foil with like silver underneath try to use that you can get that at any beauty supply store you'll also want to cover those plastic caps with like a bonnet or a toque or a towel or a t-shirt of some sort just try to insulate as much heat as possible and you want to leave it on a little bit longer so I would say anywhere from 45 minutes to about an hour or so but honestly making that initial investment is really important if you can but if you cannot try to layer your hair with some kind of plastic caps a hat a bonnet whatever you can find just to kind of insulate that heat I would say the next tip would be castor oil, you guys. I love and swear by castor oil, and that's either Jamaican black castor oil or just regular like that clear castor oil it's been amazing in my hair journey in my hair i like to call it liquid gold because it's just that good castor oil really helps to promote thickness obviously it helps to promote growth and every time i use castor oil i don't know if it's just me but my hair looks more plump it looks fuller it just overall makes my hair just look bigger i don't know what it is i love using it in my deep conditioner so i'll add like maybe like a teaspoon or a tablespoon or so in my favorite deep conditioner use some heat 
and I'm good to go. And last but not least, you guys, your health. Your health plays a huge role in how your hair looks, how your skin looks, and how you overall feel. Any kind of vitamin deficiency or mineral deficiency will definitely play out in your hair. So it's really important to check with your doctor, see what's going on. If you have a lot of shedding, if you have a lot of thinning or any scalp issues, check with your doctor, get some tests done. See where your iron levels are at. I find iron plays a huge role in the quality of our hair, in the thickness and fullness of our hair as well. So make sure you're not iron deficient because that can lead to excessive shedding. Check your ferritin levels, check your hemoglobin as well because those can be at two different numbers. And it's really important to have enough blood supply to get to your vital organs and also to your hair because on the totem pole of your health, your hair is dead last. Your hair is not gonna get what it needs to get. Your vital organs are gonna get that first. So you wanna have that nice overflow so that your hair can get all the nutrients, all that blood circulation, all that blood supply to carry the nutrients to your follicles. And from there, you'll have healthier hair. So look into your iron because if you're a black female, our iron tends to be lower for some reason based on statistics. If you're of childbearing age as well, based off of what your doctor recommends, take an iron supplement, take your multivitamins, you know, take your vitamin C, take those things that you know will contribute to healthier hair growth, drink your water, have your veggies, have your fruit and overall just try to have less stress because stress contributes to shedding and shedding contributes to thinner hair so you just want to have a nice healthy balance so yeah guys that is basically it i hope you enjoyed these tips they definitely helped me and helped to contribute to the overall health and thickness and fullness of my hair by no means am i saying to try everything that i mentioned you know your hair best so do what works for you comment down below let me know what has contributed to the overall thickness and health of your hair subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye.